too much God. Wow, too much, too much God. God does. Wow. Have you ever looked at a bush or a tree and thought, this could be worth a fortune? What if I told you that some plants aren't just growing, they're pointing directly to buried gold beneath your feet? In the wildest corners of nature, there are living gold detectors, plants that grow only in soil laced with the very minerals prospectors dream of. They don't shine, they don't sparkle, but these plants whisper secrets, ancient secrets about treasure buried deep in the earth. Today, we're peeling back the leafy curtain to reveal how plants, yes, plants, have helped uncover gold deposits worth millions. So if you're a gemstone hunter, prospector, or just someone obsessed with nature's mysteries, you're about to discover the science of botanical gold hunting. Welcome to EGS Pro, your home for untold stories of the gemstone world. Let's begin with the obvious question. How can a plant possibly detect gold? It all begins underground. When gold is buried deep beneath the earth, it doesn't just sit silently. Over time, it's affected by weathering, oxidation, and chemical leaching. Tiny gold particles dissolve into groundwater, not visible to the human eye, but just enough to travel upwards through soil and root systems. Now here's where it gets interesting. Some plants have roots that reach astonishing depths. We're talking up to 40 meters deep. That's taller than a 10-story building. As they suck in nutrients from the soil, they sometimes absorb trace amounts of gold along with other minerals. These plants don't care if it's gold or copper or arsenic, they just absorb what's there. But here's the twist. Gold is toxic to most plant life. So only special, resilient species survive in gold-rich environments. That makes them natural indicators. They only thrive where gold is present. One of the most famous examples comes from Australia, where prospectors have learned to trust an unlikely ally, the eucalyptus tree. These towering trees are known for their durability and thirst. Their roots dig deep, really deep, piercing into bedrock. In some areas, scientists have discovered something incredible. Microscopic gold particles inside the leaves and bark of eucalyptus trees. Think about that. Gold literally growing in the leaves. In one groundbreaking study published by Nature Communications, Researchers used X-ray imaging to confirm gold trapped inside eucalyptus foliage growing above known gold deposits. The trees had absorbed gold from ore bodies buried tens of meters beneath the surface. For modern prospectors, this discovery changed the game. Rather than drilling blind, they could now analyze tree samples. No digging required to detect gold far underground. It's non-invasive, it's natural, it's genius. And guess what? This method, known as biogeochemical prospecting, has led to real gold finds worth millions. But Australia isn't the only place where plants help find gold. Let's travel to Nevada, USA, one of the world's hottest gold-producing regions. Here, sagebrush dominates the landscape. You've probably seen it in cowboy films. Dusty green, tough, and wild. What you didn't know is this. Sagebrush often grows over arsenic-rich soils, and where there's arsenic, there's often gold nearby. In fact, gold is commonly associated with arsenopyrite, a mineral that breaks down and releases arsenic into the surrounding environment. So when geologists see large, healthy sagebrush thriving in specific valleys, they take it as a clue. And then there's saltbush, also known as atroplex. It's common in semi-arid gold belts, especially across parts of Australia, South Africa, and the southwestern U.S. Saltbush is a hyperaccumulator, 
It tolerates extremely salty, mineral-rich soil and can absorb metal ions including gold, copper, and zinc. Some prospectors actually grind up salt bush leaves in labs to test for metal traces, a method proven to be successful. In tropical regions, gold indicators look a little different. The Indigofera genus, yes, the same plant family used to make indigo dye, has shown promising behavior in gold-rich soils in Africa and Southeast Asia. These plants often colonize disturbed, mineral-heavy areas where gold-bearing rocks have weathered away. Their dense root systems stabilize soils where gold dust and nuggets may have settled over centuries. Another plant, cassia, with its vibrant yellow flowers, has long been associated with metal-rich terrain. In regions of Ghana, local gold miners often look for cassia shrubs while choosing spots to pan. In tropical zones, vegetation can change drastically based on geochemistry. So plants that survive in toxic, metal-loaded soils are often nature's red flags for treasure beneath. Okay, so we've talked about observation, but what does the science say? In modern prospecting, biogeochemical sampling is a powerful tool. Here's how it works. 1. Field teams collect plant samples, mostly leaves, bark, or soil near roots. 2. These samples are sent to labs, where they're dried, powdered, and analyzed using inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry, ICPMS. 3. The lab checks for trace levels of gold, arsenic, mercury, antimony, and other associated metals. The presence of these metals doesn't just say gold is near, it helps estimate depth, size, and concentration of potential deposits. In Canada, Finland, and Australia, this method is now standard in greenfield exploration, especially in areas where surface drilling is difficult or protected by environmental laws. It's efficient, precise, and significantly cheaper than large-scale excavation. Now you might be wondering, can you as an enthusiast use these plants to search for gold? The short answer? Yes, but with caution. Here's how you can start. Learn your local flora. Every region has different indicator species. What works in Nevada won't work in Ethiopia. Understand the geology. Gold tends to follow specific rock types like quartz veins, greenstone belts, and alluvial fans. Look for plant anomalies. Sudden changes in plant health, species, or growth patterns can signal underlying mineral shifts. Use basic test kits. Some field kits allow for basic soil and leaf mineral testing. Partner with local geology maps to identify hot zones. It's not guaranteed, but with patience and observation, nature could lead you to your next gold strike. In the modern rush for gold, we often forget that nature itself has been mapping treasures for thousands of years. The wind doesn't scream, the earth doesn't shout, but plants, plants whisper, they hint, they reveal, they survive where others cannot, and in doing so, they show us where to dig. Whether it's eucalyptus drawing gold from 100 feet deep, or salt bush soaking up metallic ions from dry riverbeds. These plants are more than scenery. They are the living language of the earth. So next time you walk through a dry plain, a rugged hillside, or a dense forest, look closer, because nature is talking and some of it is worth millions. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more powerful, gem-driven content right here on EGS Pro. We're unlocking the earth one secret at a time.